Robert, thank you very much for being here today. Let's start by talking about, um, obviously, information technology, but cybersecurity mm -hmm. as it relates to business. I guess, could you give me, how do you convince some a business owner? What do you say to them to uh, illustrate the seriousness of of the situation, get them to take cybersecurity seriously, convince them, Right. yes, this is going to cost you a little bit, but trust me, it's worth it. Well, hopefully in that regard, I'm charismatic, but uh, we right. still get some pushback every now and then. Um, you know, we, we do our, our job in explaining to people the risks. Mm. Um, the speech that I kind of give people all the time is that it's my job as an IT professional to protect their company and protect their best interests while still helping them balance convenience. Um, so the, the kind of the biggest pushback that we always get is, I don't want two-factor authentication because it's a pain. Right. And um, it, it can be, you know, security is sometimes complicated and sometimes a little burdensome. Um, but I just kind of outlay what our objectives are and why we focus on this so much and how important it is. Um, I try to explain the ways that we can make it easier on them mm -hmm. um, and some of the tools that we can kind of, you know, the settings we can tweak and, and things like that. And uh, sometimes it's just a lot of pulling teeth. Yeah. Um, but we eventually get there. I think they, I think everybody on some level understands why this stuff is important. Um, and maybe I'm just wearing them down over time. I don't know. But. I was going to say, is it, is it becoming, you know, as you see more and more news stories and you see other businesses doing this, is it, is, is that pitch becoming easier? Do more businesses understand the need now than five years ago? I think um, in general, maybe a little bit. Uh -huh. um, we're certainly getting you know cold calls and referrals from people who kind of already know what they want in a sense, which is helpful. Um, and that wasn't the case 10 years ago. But everybody, and I, and I mean almost everybody I talk to, I'm still fighting the mentality that they think it won't happen to them. Right, and this has been going on, you know, 15 plus years, however long I've been doing this. Um, so I have a presentation and kind of a speech where I talk about how cybersecurity incidents happen and how they're not necessarily targeted to a specific company. Um, that these people cast, um, you know, wide nets and they're looking for low-hanging fruit. And it doesn't matter if you're a, a small three-person company in Youngstown, Ohio. That mm -hmm. you know, I, I, the thing I hear all the time is, well, we don't have anything worth stealing, and that's just not how it works. Um, so I'm still fighting that mentality, and in that sense, that really hasn't changed. Well, there is, um, I think, it's probably more important now for small businesses, and you can tell me if I'm completely, uh, you know, out in left field here, but it would seem that a lot of the larger firms, they've got that kind of covered. Um, it might be more difficult, or tell me if I'm wrong. Here's, here's my thinking. I have a point, just let me get to it. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. So a lot of the larger firms, they've got this covered, to a, to a certain extent. It might be harder to get into them. So it might be more worth the, the uh, cyber criminal's time to, as you said, cast a wide net, go after a bunch of small firms who may be more vulnerable and get a smaller amount from 100 small firms as opposed to spending a lot of time trying to get a big amount from one firm. Well, when I say cast wide nets, sure. I mean that they are, they're not even looking at the size of the company. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times with how some of these things work, they're scanning an entire IP range that sits out on the internet. And whoever's got the open ports or the insecure router or whatever the case may be, that's who they go after. They're not necessarily targeting small clients. They're not necessarily targeting big clients. Mm -hmm. They are um, kind of proposing a method of attack, and they're just kind of seeing who is vulnerable to that attack. And you might have all kinds of firms that are, that are in that kind of threshold. Sure. You might have some big ones, some small ones. Um, I can say that, I'm, and, and obviously there are... Um, entities that are targeted, government organizations, larger clients, I'm sure, are targeted specifically. But, um, you know, there's, there's only so much you can do to prevent those kinds of things. If you have a high profile, you know, you're going to be targeted. So right. we try to clean up that low-hanging fruit. And I, I can tell you that um, I, I don't think the size of the firm really matters. Uh, we've worked with some really large companies and organizations that have just as bad practices when we start with them as some of the smallest ones. Mm -hmm. um, so we're seeing it at all, you know, all ranges and, and all types. I think industry helps. Um, there are certain industries that have stricter regulations and uh, more things they need to comply with, more auditing, more checks and balances. Sure. That certainly helps. Um, but like we were kind of talking about before, a lot of this is also becoming insurance driven now. Mm -hmm. So companies we're seeing protect themselves, not because sometimes they feel they need to, but because they need insurance 
and they won't get the insurance unless they're covered. So I, I think it's just a wide range, and I think that um, I, don't, I don't see any kind of pattern to it. And you mentioned cyber insurance. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies around here probably have cyber insurance, some mm -hmm. form of it. Um, could you talk a little bit about what's going on in that industry now and, and kind of how, how the industry is uh, trying to even things out from, yep. from when it all began? It's, it's changing for sure. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, uh, cyber insurance was, it's obviously important, um, but they seem to be making these massive payouts. And um, I think that they're, they're definitely tightening that up. I always give people the example, um, you know, five years ago when we help a client with their cyber insurance application, um, it used to be one page. It was like top line revenue, your top five clients, some verticals that you service, a couple of check boxes, and that was it. Um, you're done in five minutes, you submit it, and you get whatever coverage basically you ask for. Um, and the last cyber policy that I helped somebody with was 27 pages. Um, and not only are they asking for what you're currently doing, they ask for what you plan to implement, they ask for your history in terms of have you been breached, uh, what kind of issues have come up, um, and they're really being the driver of newer technology. And they're mm -hmm. forcing these companies to implement things that um, maybe they wouldn't have. Sure. Or something that you know we might have been pushing that they were a little hesitant to do. Um, and in some very rare cases, they're pushing for things that I even think are overkill. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm never going to argue against that. I would absolutely rather have overkill than nothing. Right. Um, but some of the things that they ask for sometimes don't make practical sense for the company that they want you know, to, to implement it. And um, so that's a big change. I think uh, the insurance companies just can't, um, they can't keep making these payouts. Mm -hmm. They can't keep taking on the risk. Um, and they can't keep dealing with these problems. So there's going to be some changes. And I'm sure some of this, um, particularly now that you have so many people working from home or in some kind of a hybrid situation, I'm sure some of this is um, uh, figuring out what your business is doing to make sure that those people who are working from home outside of your Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. um, what they're doing to keep your data safe. Yep. And probably I would imagine a big no-no is having them work on their own machines or their own equipment. It, it makes it more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but there's certainly things that you can do to, to you know, offset that. During the pandemic, um, fortunately for us, and I, I'm not trying to brag, but um, we forced a lot of clients in the years leading up to 2020 to adopt the right technologies, adopt the right policies, so it wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. um, we most, mostly turned on some things that were already there and people were able to work from wherever they needed to work from. Um, I'm a big proponent of company-owned devices. Um, BYOD or bring your own device was very popular for a, a short time there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've never really been a proponent of that. I, I, I think it creates a lot of issues. Um, but fortunately, we kind of forced our clients into a, a couple of lanes on those kinds of things. and. Uh, it all worked, but we did have some people that they just needed to work from their home computer, and uh, or their you know home internet connection wasn't all that great, and we had to kind of you know adjust. Um, and it certainly is a challenge. Seven Seventeen Credit Union, business services designed to meet your daily needs: commercial loans, business deposits, merchant and payroll services. Seven Seventeen Credit Union. It's knowing you were treated right every time.